نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فكهنا في الدين اللهم اني اسالك حبك وحب من يحبك وعمل الذي يبلغني حبك اللهم الهمنا رشدا وعزنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين Indeed, your Lord is Allah, who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and then established himself above the throne. He covers the night with the day, another night chasing it rapidly, and then he created the sun, the moon, the stars, subjected by his command. Unquestionably, his is the creation and the command. Blessed is Allah, Lord of the worlds. call upon your lord in humility and privately indeed he does not like transgressors so now in the next two verses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to teach us some manners when we supplicate we need to supplicate in a state of humility and humbleness and we need not announce we need not announce and declare what we are supplicating and we not need not do that in a very loud voice or in a loud manner but we need to supplicate privately to allah subhanahu wa taala who is close to us more than the neck of our vein uh, neck or uh, veins of our necks and then while we are supplicating we need not make supplications for transgression and for corruption and cause not corruption upon the earth after its reformation and invoke him in fear and aspiration so this is also a manner of how we need to supplicate when we are making dua to allah subhanahu wa taala indeed the mercy of allah is near to the doers of good verse 57 in these uh, verses from verse 57 to 59 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the example of rain how Allah causes rain to grow the crops and grow the plants on the earth and explains what it means Allah says and it is he who sends the winds as good tidings before his mercy until his mercy here is what rain before his mercy until when they have been carried when they have carried heavy heavy rain clouds we drive them we drive them to a dry, dead land and we send down rain there in and bring forth thereby some of all the fruits thus will we bring forth the dead perhaps you may be reminded and the good land its vegetation emerges by the permission of its lord but that which is bad <coughs> what is bad a bad land nothing emerges except sparsely with difficulty thus do we diversify the signs for people who are grateful so here in these two verses allah subhanahu wa taala explains that uh, gives the example of rain how it causes the land to grow cultivation giving uh, giving this example many times in quran so uh, many things which are proved out of it for once allah subhanahu wa taala proves that if allah can cause life and signs of life in a dead piece of land after the pouring rain allah subhanahu wa taala can very well raise the dead from their graves on the day of judgment so this example has been quoted many times on quran to prove the truth of life hereafter and secondly allah quotes this example in the verses of quran to compare the rain with the teachings of quran and hadith like after rain 
the plantation grows and the crops grow. So similarly, when with the mercy of Allah and with the will of Allah, the teachings of Quran are spread. The teachings and the messages and the commandments of Allah are spread and they are taught. What grows like a crop is the crops of righteous and pious deeds grow in the hearts of the bondsmen, in the lives of the bondsmen also, which crops which they will reap on the day of judgment. Verse number 59. From here till verse number 92, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reciting and narrating the events of the followers of the five prophets. They are being narrated the uh, the followers of the five prophets who invited them towards belief on the oneness of Allah and with, towards the obedience and fear of Allah, but they all refused. Uh, they refused arrogantly and they continued in their disobedience and transgressions. And Allah has quoted all these examples to show and uh, augment the summary of Surah Araf by quoting the examples of past and highlighting that how all those who disbelieved and disobeyed and transgressed from the limits of Allah, they were punished by the penalties and by the torments of Allah. Now, I shall be just going through the verses. I will not be explaining these verses, the messages and the lessons and the whole of the narration of the events in these five nations, I will be explaining in detail, inshallah, while we go through Surah Hud, inshallah, in a few days. So uh, I will just read through it and we will discuss in a greater detail in Surah Hud. We had certainly sent Nu alayhi salam. Allah says, we had certainly sent Nu alayhi salam to his people. And he said, oh, my people worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of a tremendous day, said the imminent. All this was opposing the prophets, the imminent people, the elite of the society and the town. Said the imminent people among his people. Indeed, we see you in a clear error. Nu alayhi salam said, oh, my people, there is not error in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I convey to you the messages of my Lord and advise you, and I know from Allah what you do not know. Then do you wonder that there has come to you a reminder from your Lord through a man from among you, that he may warn you and that you may fear Allah so you might receive mercy." But they denied him, so we saved him and those who were with him in the ship, and we drowned those who denied our signs. Indeed, they were a blind people. And to Ad, we sent their brother Hud. Always prophets were sent before Prophet Sallallahu from among the people and just towards those people. He said, oh, my people, worship Allah. All the prophets were inviting their followers towards the faith and the oneness of Allah. You have no deity other than him. They, then will you not fear Allah? Said the eminent ones who disbelieved among his people. Indeed, we see you in foolishness. And indeed, we think that you are of liars. Who said, oh, my people, there is not foolishness in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I convey to you the messages of my Lord, and I am to you a trustworthy advisor. All those who convey the messages of Allah to the bondsmen of Allah need to be what? Trustworthy and truthful. Then do you wonder that there has come to you a reminder from your Lord through a man from among you that he may warn you and remember when he made you successors after the people of Nu and increased you in stature extensively. So remember the favors of Allah that you may succeed. Those who are grateful will succeed here and hereafter. They said, have you come to us that we should worship Allah alone and leave what our, our fathers have worshipped? Then bring us what you promise us if you should be of the truthful, having the audacity to ask for the torments and punishments of Allah. 
Hood said, already have defilement and anger fallen upon you from your Lord. Do you dispute with me concerning mere names? You have named them, you and your fathers, for which Allah has not sent down any authority? Then wait. Indeed, I am with you among those who wait. So we saved him, whom the prophet, and those with him by the mercy from us, and we eliminated those who denied our signs, and they were not at all believers. And to Samud, we sent their brothers, Swali. He said, oh, my people worship Allah. You have no deity other than Allah. All the prophets were continuously negating all forms of polytheism. There has come to you a clear evidence from your Lord. This is the she camel of Allah sent to you as a sign. So leave her to eat within Allah's land and do not touch her with harm, lest they seize you a painful punishment. And remember when he made you successors after the Ard and settle you in the land and you take for yourselves palaces from its plains and carve from the mountains homes, then remember the favors of Allah and do not com commit abuse on the earth spreading corruption, said the imminent ones who were the arrogant among his people to, to those who were the oppressed, to those who believed among them. Do you actually know that Saleh is sent from his Lord? They said, indeed, we in that in which he has sent our believers, said those who were arrogant. Indeed, we in that which you have believed are disbelievers. So they have strung the she camel and they were insolent towards the commands of their lords and said, O Saleh, bring us what you promise us if you should be of the messengers. So the earthquake seized them and they became with their homes fallen prone. And he turned away from them and said, O my people, I had certainly conveyed to you the messages of my Lord and advise you, but you do not like advisors. And we had sent Luth when he sent to his people, do you commit such immorality as no one has preceded you with from among the worlds? They were what? They were the pioneers of the act of homosexuality. Indeed, you approach men with desire instead of women. Rather, you are a transgressing people. But the answer of his people was only that they said, evict them from your city. Indeed, they are men. Who keep themselves pure so we saved him and his family except for his wife she was of those who remained within the evil doers and we rained upon them a rain of stones then see how was the end of the criminals and to the people of Madian, we sent their brother Shoaib. He said, oh, my people, worship Allah. You have no deity other than him. There has come to you clear evidence from your Lord. So fulfill the mayors and wait, and do not deprive people of their due and cause not corruption upon the earth after its reformation. That is better for you if you should be believers. And do not sit on every path threatening and averting from the way of Allah those who believe in him, seeking to make it seem deviant. And remember when you were few and he increased you and see how was the end of the corruptors. And if there should be a group among you who has believed in that which I have been sent and a group that has not believed, then be patient until Allah judges between us and he is the best of judges said the eminent ones who were arrogant among his people we will surely evict you O shuaib and those who have believed you from our city or you must return to our religion he said even if we are unwilling we would have invented against allah a lie if we returned to your religion after allah has saved us from it and it is not for us to return to it except that allah our lord should will our lord has encompassed all things in knowledge upon allah we have relied our lord decide between us and our people in truth and you are the best of those who give decisions 
said the eminent ones who disbelieved among his people, if you should follow Shu'ib, indeed you will be then the losers. So the earthquake seized them and they became within their homes, fallen prone. Those who denied Shu'ib, it was though as though they had never resided there. Those who denied Shu'ib, it was as though as, as who were the losers. And he turned away from them and said, Oh, my people, I had certainly conveyed to you the messages of my Lord and advised you. So how could I grieve for a disbelieving people? And we sent to no city a prophet who was denied. We sent to no city a prophet who was denied except that we seized its people with poverty and hardships that they might do what? They might do. Allah says they might humble themselves to Allah. So from here, verse number 94 to 102, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats the message of uh, the surah and summarizes again. Allah summarizes here again why nations are afflicted. And Allah explains what should a nation do when they are afflicted with the trials and hardships from Allah. Allah says that people are afflicted with hardships and trials so that they do what? Yatazwarraun. They do what? They leave and they just get rid of their arrogant behavior. And they leave their arrogant, disobedient behavior. And they, they seek forgiveness. They humble down to Allah. They bow down to Allah. They submit to Allah. They surrender in obedience to Allah, seeking forgiveness and repenting for all the previous arrogant disobediences and transgressions they had been up to. So this is what all hardships and all crises when they befall the disobedient nations are meant to give them a good jolting and meant to return them and to reform them to refrain from all the disobediences. Then Allah says, then when we exchanged in place of the bad condition, good condition, until they increased and they prospered and they said, our fathers also were touched with hardships and ease, so we seized them suddenly while they did not perceive. And if only the people of the cities had believed and feared Allah, we would have opened upon them blessings from the heaven and the earth, but they denied the messengers. So we seized them for what they were earning. And then did the people of the cities feel secure from our punishments coming to them at night while they were asleep? Or did the people of the cities feel secure from our punishments coming to them in the morning while they were at play? Then did they feel secure from the plan of Allah? But no one feels secure from the plan of Allah except the losing people. Has it not become clear to those who inherited the earth after its previous people that if we willed, we could afflict them for their sins? but we seal over their hearts so they do not hear. Those cities, we relate to you some of their news and certainly did their messengers come to them with clear proofs, but they did not believe in what, in which they had denied before. So they were what? They were stubborn, they were obstinate, they were arrogant, and they continued in their disobedience. Thus, does Allah seal over the hearts of the disbelievers? And we did not find for most of them any covenant, but indeed we found most of them defiantly disobedient. Verse number 103. Then we sent after them Musa alayhi salam. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from verse number 103 to 162 is going to mention the events of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. We have talked about them in Surah Baqarah and the rest. 
I shall be inshallah discussing in the coming surahs. So I will be just reading through them. <coughs> We sent after them Musa alayhi salam with our signs to Pharaoh and his establishment, but they were unjust towards them. See how was the end of the corruptors. And Musa said, O Pharaoh, I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds who is obligated not to say, not to say about Allah except the truth. I have come to you with clear evidence from your Lord. So send with me the children of Israel. Pharaoh said, if you have come with a sign, then bring it forth, if you should be of the truthful. So Musa alayhi salam threw his staff, and suddenly it was a serpent manifest, and he drew out his hand. These are the two miracles. Thereupon, it was white with radiance for the observers, said the imminent among the people of Pharaoh. Indeed, it is a learned magician who wants to expel you from your land through magic. So what do you instruct? They said, postpone the matter of him and his brother and send among the city gatherers who will bring you every learned magician. And the magicians came to Pharaoh. They said, indeed, for us is a reward if we are the predominant. He said, yes, and moreover, you will be among those made near to me. He offered them post, honor, uh, uh, authority, and power. They said, oh, Musa, either you throw your staff or we will be the ones to throw first. He said, throw. And when they threw, they bewitched the eyes of the people and struck terror into them. And they presented a great feat of magic. And we inspired Musa alayhi salam, throw your staff. And at once it devoured what they were falsifying. So the truth was established and abolished was what they were doing. And Pharaoh and his people were overcome right there and became debased. And the magicians fell down in prostration to Allah. And they said, we have believed in the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of Musa and Harun alayhi salam said, Pharaoh, you, you believed in him before I gave you permission. This was his arrogance. Indeed, this is, this is a conspiracy which you conspired in the city to expel their form, its people. But you are going to know. I, I will surely cut off your hands and your feet on the opposite sides. And then I will surely crucify you all. He just tried to use his power to scare them back to revert. They said, indeed, to our Lord, we will return and you do not resent us except because we believed in the signs of our Lord. When they came to us, our Lord, pour upon us patience and let us die as Muslims in submission to you. And the eminent among the people of Pharaoh said, will you leave Musa salam, and his people to cause corruption in the land and abandon you and your gods? Pharaoh said, we will kill their sons. This was for the second time. We will kill their sons and keep their women alive. Indeed, we are subjugators over them. Said Musa alayhi salam to his people, seek help through Allah and be patient. Indeed, the earth belongs to Allah. He causes to inherit it whom he wills of his servants. And the best outcome is for the righteous. They said, who? The followers of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. We have been harmed before you came to us. And after you have come to us, he said, perhaps your Lord will destroy your enemy and grant you succession in the land and see how you will do. This what was? This was reliance on Allah. And this was a faith and belief of the powers and authorities of Allah. And those who rely on Allah and believe in Allah, Allah never leaves them alone. Allah helps them. And we certainly seized the people of Pharaoh with the years of famine and a deficiency in fruits that perhaps they would be reminded. But when good came to them, they said, this is our by right. And if bad conditions struck them, they said they saw an evil omen in Musa salam, and those with him. Unquestionably, their fortune is with Allah, but most of them do not know. And they said, no matter what signs you bring to us with which to bewitch us, we will not be believers in you. Verse number 133. So we sent upon them the flood and the locusts and the lies, the frogs and the blood. 
as distinct signs, but they were arrogant and they were criminal people. So what is all this which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning is signs towards the people of Pharaoh who still stayed as preferred to stay as criminal people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would keep on sending one sign after the other. First of all, there was drought, the rains stopped, there was drought and famine struck them. Whenever there was a calamity which fell on them, they used to come and they used to ask Hazrat Musa alayhi salam to supplicate. So when the rains had been stopped, they came to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that it would rain and the famine would go. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam supplicated for them and it started raining. Because uh, when it started raining, then it kept on raining and there was heavy downpour of rain, which led to flood. And this flood led to what? It again led to destruction of all the crops. So they again came to Musa alayhi salam and they requested him to supplicate for the rain to stop. And the rain stopped and uh, it, uh, it le le led to stopping of the floods as well. So now when there was raining in just the right amount and their crops, they grew also, and they were very happy about it, that they were seeing their crops grow. So just before, just before their crops reached harvesting, what happened was that by the will of Allah and by the order of Allah was the next punishment or was the next, uh, the sign of Allah was that Allah sent down locusts. And what these locusts did was they ruined all the crops all over again. So again, they came over to Musa alayhi salam to ask him to supplicate, to control these locusts. And uh, the locusts were spoiling their crops before harvesting. And as Musa alayhi salam supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the locusts were taken away also. Then what happened was that there was the right amount of rain and there were no floods and there were no locusts and they harvested their crops and the crops grew and they harvested their crops and they stored the crops in the granaries. And then by the order of Allah as a sign, there were lice and there were insects which spoiled all the grains in the granaries. They again came over to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam to ask him to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them get rid of all these insects and lice which were spoiling their grains in the granaries. And then again he supplicated and his supplication was heard and they got rid of all the lice and the insects. And then what happened next was that everything seemed to go smooth. It rained and rained in the, in the correct amount. There were no floods, there were no locusts, there were no lice, and their grains were safe and sound in their granaries. They would grind the grains and they would prepare their food. And you know what would happen is that the, all the community and all the locality got crowded up and flooded up with frogs. They would prepare, they would cook their food. And what happened was that the frogs would come jumping and they would jump in their food and in their pots, spoiling all their foods. Despite preparing their foods, they could no longer consume their food. And again, they went to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and every time they used to go to him, but still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when used to take off the punishment, they still opted to be disobedient and they still continued to be transgressors. Now they went to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, asking him to supplicate to get rid of the frogs. And so the frogs also disappeared. And then last was the torment of blood. Everything went to a Carried on, carried on and seemed to carry on smoothly and they were able to prepare and they were able to cook their foods. And this time there were no frogs jumping into their pots also. But what happened was when they sat, when they sat to eat and they were going to drink, what happened was it seemed to them or it actually happened by the will of Allah that their, that their pots and their utensils and their foods and their drinks, it it got full of blood. There, there might have been actual blood by the order of Allah or when they just looked into their plates and they looked into their pots and utensils or they looked into their wells, they could see that they were all full of blood. And again, also, they could not 
they could not eat up and they could not drink and it was impossible for them to eat and drink. And these were the signs which were repeatedly sent to them one after the other consecutively to give them a jolting so that they do what? They give up their disobedience. They give up their obstinate and stubborn behavior and they get humbled. They submit to the obedience of Allah and they seek repentance and seek forgiveness from Allah. And when punishments descended upon them and they said, O Musa, invoke for us your Lord by what he has promised you. If you can remove the punishment from us, we will surely believe you and we will, we will send with you the children of Israel. But when we remove the punishments from them until a term which they were to reach, then at once they broke their words. Verse 136, so we took retribution from them and we drowned them in the sea because they denied our signs and were heedless of them. So in verse 136, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining that prior to the big punishment, prior to the final blow, which caused them to drown and to perish, they were sent small punishments, repeated, consecutive, continuous small punishments. And the purpose of all these small per, uh, punishments was to make them bow down humbly and to submit and surrender to the obedience of Allah but they stayed heedless. And then there was one final last blow which perished them all. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. And we caused the people who had been oppressors to inherit the eastern region of the land and the western one which we had blessed. And the good word of your Lord was fulfilled for the children of Israel because of what they had patiently endured. And we destroyed all that Pharaoh and his people were producing and what they had been building. And we took the children of Israel across the sea. Then they came upon a people intent in devotion to some idols up there. They said, O Musa, make for us a God just as they have gods. He said, indeed, you are a people behaving ignorantly. Indeed, those who worship destroyed is that in which they are engaged and worthless is whatever they are doing. He said, is it other than Allah I should desire for you as a God while he has preferred you over the worlds? And recall, O children of Israel, when we saved you from the people of Pharaoh who were afflicting you with the worst torment, killing your sons and keeping your women alive, and in that was a great trial from your Lord. And we made an appointment with Musa alayhi salam for 30 nights and perfected them by the addition of 10. So... The term of his Lord was completed as 40 nights and Musa salam, said to his brother Harun, take my place among my people, do right by them and do not follow the way of corruptors. And when Musa salam, arrived at our appointed time and his Lord spoke to him, he said, my Lord, show me yourself that I might look at you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had conversed with Hazrat Musa salam, So he said, he requested for him to have sight of his Lord. Allah said, you will not see me, but look at the mountain. If it should remain its, in its place, then you will see me. But when his Lord appeared on the mountain, he rendered it level and Musa salam fell unconscious. And when he woke, he said, exalted are you. I have repented to you and I am the first of the believers. So repenting and seeking forgiveness when erring is the manner and the sunnah of the prophets. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al -mutatahirin. And we also learn from here that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam also Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, both of these prophets, they did converse and Allah did converse with them also as a conversation, as a dialogue. But both the prophets did not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually with their eyes. This will be a blessing which will be blessed to all the inmates of Jannah on the day of Jannah, on the day of uh, the judgment by the order of Allah. Allah said, O Musa alayhi salam, I have chosen you over the people with my messages and my words to you. So take what I have given you and be among the grateful. 
and we wrote for him on the tablets something of all the things. These were what the Ten Commandments of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Take the uh, instructions and explanations for all the things, saying, take them with determination and order your people to take the best of it. I will show you the homes of the defiantly disobedient. I will turn away from my I will turn away from my signs those who are arrogant upon the earth without right. If they should see every sign, they will not believe in it. And if they see the way of consciousness, they will not adopt it as a way. And But if they see the way of error, they will adopt it as a way. That is because they have denied our signs and they were heedless of them. Those who denied our signs in the meetings of hereafter, their deeds have become worthless. Are they recompensed except for what they used to do? And the people of Musa alayhi salam made after his departure from their ornaments a calf, an image having a lowing sound. Did they not see that it could neither speak to them nor guide them to a way? They took it for worship and they were the wrongdoers. And when regret came over them, they saw that they had gone astray. They said, if our Lord does not have mercy upon us and forgive us, we shall we will be surely among the losers. <coughs> and when Musa Salam returned to his people angry and grieved, why? Because he had received the knowledge from uh, the order of Allah that they had been indulging in the worshiping of idols and polytheisms. He said, how wretched is that by which you have replaced me after my departure? Were you impatient over the matter of your Lord? And he threw down the tablets and seized his brother by his hair, by the hair of his head, pulling him towards him. Harun, O son of my mother, indeed the people oppressed me. Harun said, O son of my mother, indeed the people oppressed me and were about to kill me. So let not the enemies rejoice over me and do not place me among the wrongdoing people. Musa said, My Lord, forgive me and my brother and admit us in your mercy. And for you are the most merciful of the merciful. Indeed, those who took the calf for worship will obtain anger from their Lord and humiliation in the life of this world. And thus, do we recompense the inventors of falsehood? But those who committed misdeeds and then repented after them and believed, indeed, your Lord thereafter is forgiving and merciful. And when the anger subsided in Musa, he took up the tablets and in their inscriptions was guidance for mercy for those who were fearful of their Lord. And Musa salam chose from his people 70 men for an appointment. And when the earthquake seized them, he said, my Lord, if you had will, you could have destroyed them before me as well. Would you destroy us for what foolish, foolish people among us have done? This is not but your trial by which you send astray whom you will and guide whom you will. You are our protector, so forgive us and have mercy upon us. You are the best of forgivers. And decree for us in this world that which is good and also in the hereafter. Indeed, we have turned back to you. Allah said, my punishment, I afflict with it whom I will, but my mercy encompasses all things. So I will decree it specially for those who fear me and give zakat and those who believe in our verses. Those who follow the messengers, the unlettered prophet, Prophet whom? Ummi, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whom they find written in what they have of Torah and Injil, who enjoins upon them what is right and forbids them what is wrong and makes lawful for them the good things and prohibits for them the evil and relieves them of their burdens and the shackles which are upon them. So they who have believed in him honored him, supported him, and followed the light which was sent down with him. It is those who will be the successful. 
say, O mankind, indeed I am the messenger of Allah to you all from him to whom belongs the dominion of heavens and earth. There is no deity except him. He gives life and causes death. So believe in Allah and his messenger, the unlettered prophet who believes in Allah and his words and follows him that you may be guided. And among the people of Musa salam, is a community which guides by truth, by it establishes justice. And we divided them into 12 descendant tribes as distinct nations. And we inspired Musa alayhi salam when his people implored him for water, strike with your staff the so stone, and they gushed forth from it 12 springs. Everyone knew its watering place, and we shaded them with the clouds and sent them, sent down upon them the man and the salwa, telling them, eat from the good things with which we have provided you and they wronged us not but they were only wronging themselves and mention O muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when it was sent to them dwell in this city and eat from it wherever you will relieve us of our burdens and enter the gates bowing humbly we will then forgive your sins we will increase the doers of good in goodness and reward but those who wronged among them changed the words to a statement other than that which had been sent to them so we sent upon them a punishment from the sky for the wrong they had been doing verse number 163 and ask them about the town that was by the sea. Now in this verses number 163 to 165, Allah is talking about the people of Sabbath. And uh, this has been mentioned previously in Surah Baqarah where I have discussed them in detail. Ask them about the town that was by the sea when they transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath. When when their fish came to them openly on the day of Sabbath and the day they had no Sabbath, they did not come to them. Thus, we did we give them trial because they were defiantly disobedient. And when a community among them said, why do you advise or warn people whom Allah is about to destroy or punish with a severe punishment? They, the advisors said, to be absolved before your Lord, and perhaps they might fear him. And when they forgot that by which they had been reminded, we saved those who had forbidden evil and seized those who had wronged with a wretched punishment because they were defiantly disobedient. So when they were insolent about which they had been forbidden, we said to them, be apes despised and mention when your lord declared that he would surely continue continue to send upon them until the day of resurrection those who would afflict them with the words of torment with the worst of torment indeed your lord is swift in penalty but indeed he is forgiving and merciful allahumma hasibna hisab yasira allahumma hasibna hisab yasira rabbi ighfir warham wa anta khairur rahimin and we divided them throughout the earth into nations and some of them were righteous and of them some were otherwise we tested them with good times and bad that perhaps they would return to obedience so there followed them successors who inherited the scripture while taking the commodities of this lord life and saying it will be forgiven for us and if an offer like it comes to them they will again take it was not the covenant of the scripture taken for them that they would not say about Allah except the truth and they studied what was in it and the home of hereafter is better for those who fear Allah so will you not use reason but those who hold fast to the book and establish the prayer, indeed, we will not allow to be lost the reward of the reformers and mention when we raise the mount above them as if it was a dark cloud and they were certain that it would fall upon them. And Allah said, 
take what we have given you with determination and remember what is in it that you might fear Allah. Verse 172, and mention when your Lord took from them, from, uh, from the children of Adam alayhi salam, from their loins, their descendants, and made them testify of themselves, saying to them, am I not your Lord? They said, yes, we have testified this lest you should say on the day of resurrection, indeed, we were of this unaware. In this verse 172, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned an event before the creation of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. This is what? The pledge with the Lord, the testament with the Lord, the covenant of all the human beings with their Lord. Now, this verse clearly explains that by the order of Allah, the creator created all the human beings who were to be sent to the earth till the day of judgment. They were all taken and they were presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his throne. Now there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presenting them all in front of him, he had asked them, that was I, am I not your Lord? Am I not your Lord? Am I not your sustainer? This was the question which was asked from all the human beings presented before Allah on his throne. And they all testified. They all testified. They said what Quran says, they said they acknowledged that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was their creator and their sustainer. And this was, the purpose of this assembly and the purpose of this testification was what? As Allah says, That this was done, that lest you say on the day of resurrection that we were unaware. We were unaware of the presence of our Lord, sustainer and creator. This event was created Remember this event of assembling and testifying and taking a pledge or a covenant, this was created to instill, to inject or to infuse the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the instinct of all the human beings in the instinct of all the human beings so that it might be easy it might get possible for every person to instinctly recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Lord of the universe. The person may or the person may not receive the verses of the divine scriptures, or the person may or may not get the calls from the messengers or the prophets, by, but just by looking around, looking around the creations of the universe, the creations of the creator, and responding to the instinctive call of his natural instincts, it will be possible for the people to recognize and to have faith in the Lord of the universe. It is in this natural instinct, because of this natural instinct of all the human beings, we being Muslims, we do not feel it. We do not feel it because we have we have received the recognition of Allah by birth because of our being born in a Muslim family. We did not have to, we did not have to respond to this instinctive, this instinctive call from within our souls, giving us recognition of the creator. But this instinct, this natural instinctive call of the soul is always there for all the human beings to realize and to relate and to recognize the Lord just by looking around in the creations of Allah. Or lest you say it was only that our fathers associated others in worship with Allah before and that, and we were but descendants after them, then would you destroy us for what the falsifiers have done? And thus do we explain in detail the verses and perhaps they will return. Verse number 174, and recite to them the news of him whom we gave the knowledge of our signs, but he detached himself, 
but he detached himself from them. So Shaitan pursued him and he became of the deviators. And if we had willed, we could have elevated him thereby. And he adhered instead to the earth and followed his own desires. So his example is like that of a dog. If you chase him, he pants, or if you leave him, he still pants. This, that is the example of the people who denied our signs. So relate the story that perhaps they will give thought. So in these two verses, 174 and 175, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the condition of a person who was blessed with the knowledge and with the awareness of the verses of Quran and the words of Hadith. Remember Allah says, Man khayran din. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the knowledge and comprehension of religion to the person with whom he explains whom he desires to bless. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had desired to bless this person and he blessed him with the knowledge and with the comprehension of the commandments and the messages of Quran and Hadith. But you know, despite being blessed by this knowledge, instead of believing and obeying the messages of the book, this person became a slave of his own desires and started acting according to his own desires rather than following the teachings and commandments of Quran, which he had gained knowledge of. So despite being blessed when he was, he was being ungrateful, then shaitan pursued him and shaitan chased him and shaitan got in, in control of him and then he became a deviator. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving an example to all of us not to adopt this mannerism. And Allah is explaining that this person who started following, following his desires, despite having the knowledge of the orders of Allah, is like a dog. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. Allahumma alhimna rushdan wa aizna min shururi anfusina. Allahumma rahmatika arju. Fala taqilni ila nafsi min tarfata aynin. Wa aslihli shakni kullahu la ilaha illa. How evil is an example is that of the people who denied our signs and used to wrong themselves. Verse 178, and whoever Allah guides, he is the rightly guided and whoever he sends astray, it is those who are the losers. So who are the losers whom Allah misguides and who are the lo losers? Allah explains in Surah Al-Asr, the losers are those while Asr, Innal insana lafi khusrin, illa lazina amanu wa amilu swali hati, wa tawasaw bil haqi, wa tawasaw bil sabr. All those will be losers here and hereafter, except those who believe, and after believe, do what? Do righteous deeds. And then they advise, give advice about the truth and advice regarding patience. Allahumma ja'alni saburo wa ja'alni shakura. Verse 179, and we have certainly created for hell many of the jinn and mankind. They have hearts with which they do not understand. They have eyes with which they do not see. And they have ears with which they do not hear. Those are like livestock, like animals. Rather, they are more astray. It is they who are the heedless. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining that inmates of hellfire are those who, despite of being blessed with all faculties to comprehend and to understand, they still do not use all these faculties and hence they stay deprived of faith and belief. They have eyes and they do not see. Why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with eyes, our ability of sight, Remember, Allah did not give us eyes and sight to just keep on watching drama serials or movies or to see um, all forms of musical concerts or matches and to keep on seeing and watching the cooking shows or to see or follow the news feed or to watch videos on the YouTubes wasting our time or videos video calls and chatting and silly and pointless debates and conversation or looking around and noticing the designer dresses and jewelries and handbags of others 
No, eyes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator has given us to see around ourselves, to see the creations of the Lord, to see the creations of the universe and recognize the creator and our sustainer. Eyes have been given to read, to learn, to comprehend the verses of Quran, to look around ourselves and to find the needy, the deprived and the oppressed around ourselves to help them, to support them. Eyes have been blessed to all of us to look around ourselves and to see the disobedience, to see the, dis to see the transgressors in the society and to do what? Amar bil maruf and nahiyan al munkar. To enjoin what is good and to stop from what is, what is evil and what is sinful. To see the blessings and the bounties which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has blessed us all with so that we can be grateful and we can be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ears? Not just to put in ear plugs and to keep on listening to the music and to the beats of the drum, not to listen to the silly jokes and the pointless conversation, making fun of people, mocking people, backbiting, slandering, but ears we have been blessed to listen to the recitation of Quran, to listen to the teachings of Quran and Hadith, to listen to the proclamation of salah and to respond to it, to answer it, to offer a salah, to listen to the calls of those working for the preaching and the teaching and the implementation of Quran, calling us manansuari ilallah, so that we respond by saying nahnu ansuarullah. Ears have been given to all of us to be all ears to the call of the widows and the orphans, the have-nots and the deprived of the society to listen sensitively, to listen sensitively, the crying and the sobbing of our near and dear ones and to help them and support them. Heart, hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us. Why? Not to load it up with the love of the world, with the love of the worldly riches and the wealth and the lust and the desire of money, not to fill it up and load it up with feelings of envy and jealousy and mutual enmity, not to pump it up with the feelings of arrogance. No, heart has, been, heart has been given to all of us. For sure it has been given to all of us as Prophet said, that there is a part of the body, if it spoils, the whole body goes wrong. And if it stays good, the whole body stays good. Remember, the part of the body, the organ of the body is the heart. The heart where Prophet when he was asked, where is taqwa? Where is piety? Where is the feeling of being pious? He said, taqwa ha huna, taqwa ha huna, taqwa ha huna. And he pointed towards his breast and his chest and his heart. So heart was given to all of us to fill it up with the love of Allah. To fill it up with the love, respect, regard of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma inni asaluka hubbaka wa hubba man yuhibbuka wa amal allazi yuballighuni hubbaka to fill it up with the desire to learn the Quran, to fill it up with the fear of Allah, with the piety of Allah, for the fear of hereafter, to fill it up with the sensitivity, with the care and the mercy for all those around us. For us to have the pain for the suffering and the ailing humanity, that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with the heart. Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nura wa fi sam'i nura Verse number 180. And to Allah belongs the best names. So invoke him by them and leave the company of those who practice deviation concerning his names. They will be recompensed for what they have been doing. 99 names of Allah Almighty, they show his attributes, they give us recognition of his powers, of his right, of his controls, of his authorities. Prophet Sallallahu told all of us that whoever will memorize these 90 names of, 99 names of Quran, he will be forgiven on the day of judgment. And here in this verse, Allah is saying, فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Call Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when you supplicate him, when you make dua to him, Call him, address him with these 99 names. Like when we have to, when we have to ask, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how do we need to make dua. Allah says that when you call him, when you supplicate him, use, use these words to call him. 
This is a manner of dua. Then when we need sustenance, we call him as Ya Razik, Ya Razak, Ya Rabbal Alameen. When we need guidance, we may call him as Ya Hadi. When we knowledge, we may call him as Al Alim, Ya Allahul Ghayub, Ya Alimul Ghayb. When we need cure, we may call him as Ya Shafi. When we need forgiveness, we are seeking forgiveness, we may call him as Ya Ghafar, Ya Ghafur. Ya Qabil al-Tawb, Ya Qabil al-Zam, Ghafir al-Zam. When we are asking for his mercy, we may call him as Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Hanan, Ya Manan. So this is a manner which the verse is taught, teaching us for making supplication. And among those we created is a community which guides by truth. Allahumma ja'alna minhum and thereby establishes justice. Allahumma ja'alna minhum and those who deny our signs, we will progressively lead them to destruction from where they do not know. And I will, I will give them time. Indeed, my plan is firm. And then do they not give thought there is in their companion? No, no insanity or no madness. He is but a clear warner. Do they not look into the realm of the heavens and the earth and everything that Allah has created and think perhaps their appointed time has come near? So in what statement hereafter will they believe? Whoever Allah sends astray, there is no guide for him, and he leaves them in their transgression, wandering blindly. Allahumma ihtina sirat al mustaqim. They ask you about the hour. When is its arrival? Say, its knowledge is only with my Lord. None will reveal its time except him. It lays heavily, it lays heavily upon the heavens and the earth. It will not come upon you except unexpectedly they ask you as if you are familiar with it say its knowledge is only with Allah but most of the people do not know say I hold not for myself the power of benefit or harm except what Allah has built and if I knew the unseen I could have acquired much wealth and no harm would have touched me I am not except a warner and a bringer of good tidings to the people who believe it is he who created you from one soul and created from it its mates that he might dwell in security with her. And when he covers her, she carries a light burden and continues therein. Allah is mentioning about a woman conceiving and then in her early pregnancy, continuing till the end of her pregnancy. And when it becomes heavy, they both invoke Allah, their Lord. If you should give us a good child, we will surely be among the grateful. So in these verses, number 190 to 198, Allah is negating all forms of polytheism by explaining how those who, are made, who, who make partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are devoid of uh, the comprehension of attributes of Allah. So here explaining this example that how they used to invoke Allah first, but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with a child, they, they again turned ungrateful to Allah. And as a sign of a lack of gratitude, they started finding partners with him. But when he gives them a good child, they ascribe partners to him concerning that which he has given to them. Exalted is Allah above what they associate with him. Do they associate with them? Do they associate with him those who create nothing and they themselves are created and the false deities are unable to give them help, nor can they help themselves. And if you believers invite them to guidance, they will not follow you. It is all the same for you, whether you invite them or you are silent. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comparing all those who are considered as deities with Allah and comparing all of them with Allah. Indeed, those you polytheists call upon besides Allah are servants like you. So call upon them and let them respond to you if you should be truthful. Do they have feet by which they walk or do they have hands by which they strike or do they have eyes by which they see or do they have ears by which they hear? Say, call your partners and conspire against me and give me no respite. 
Indeed, my protector is Allah, who has sent down the book, and he is an ally to the righteous. And those you call upon besides him are unable to help you, nor can they help themselves. And if you invite them to guidance, they do not hear, and you see them looking at you. This will all, like all the statues who've been created, it seems as if they are looking to you while they do not see. Take what is given freely, enjoin what is good, and turn away from the ignorant. And if an evil suggestion comes to you from shaitan, and then seek refuge in Allah. Indeed, he is hearing and knowing. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytwani rajim. Rabbi a'uzu bika min hamazati shayateen. Ba a'uzu bika rabbi yan yahzaruni. Indeed, those who fear Allah, Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha, those who fear Allah, when an impulse touches them from shaitan, they remember him and at once they have an insight. But their brothers, the devils, increase them in error, then they do not stop short. And when and when you do not bring them a sign, they say, why have you not contrived it? Say, I only follow what is revealed to me from my Lord. This Quran is an enlightenment from your Lord and a guidance and a mercy for all? No, for people who believe. Allahumma taj'alla minhum. Rabbana innana amanna. Faghfir lana zanubana wakina azaban nar. Verse number 204, so when the Quran is recited, then listen to it and pay attention that you may receive mercy and remember your Lord within yourself in humility and in fear without being apparent in speech in the morning and in the evening and do not be among the heedless. So in the verse number 204, Allah is teaching us about a response respectful manner regarding the recitation of Quran. And Allah is saying that when your Quran is being recited, then you need to do what? You need to whistle to it. You need to listen to it and pay attention to it and listen attentively so that Allah's mercy will befall you and you will receive faith, iman and righteousness from it in return. So we learn from here that when someone is reciting the Quran loudly or when the recite the recitation of Quran is being played, then it needs to be heard silently. But if no one is listening to the recitation of the Quran, then it should be switched off. Remember, it is not mandatory. It is not mandatory for all the bondsmen that if a person plays recitation or starts rec reciting aloud, then all those around should leave their work and listen to it. Because you know, there may be people who might have some important work of a uh, piece of work to be done. But what is needed is that at least one person should be listening to the recitation. And one, when there is a situation that even one person is not listening to the Quran, recitation of Quran, then it should be switched off. Verse number 205, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is here teaching us a manner of remembrance of Allah and also is teaching us a manner of remembrance of Allah in our salah. <coughs> because as Allah says in Quran, that for remembrance of Allah, establish salah. So salah is no doubt the best manner of remembrance of Allah. So this verse is teaching us a style of reciting Quran and reciting the words of salah during salah. And they should be what? That we, they should be recited with total humility in a state of humbleness. And they should not be recited very loud, although with a low voice, they should be recited. One night, what we learn is that Prophet ﷺ visited and he saw Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, and Hazrat Umar anhu, recite Quran in Salatul Tahajj. Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu, was reciting Quran in a very low voice. And Hazrat Umar anhu, was reciting Quran in the Salat of Tahajjud in a very loud voice. Now, in the morning, after Fajr prayer, when Prophet ﷺ met both of them, he stopped them and he asked them, 
he asked abu bakr and hazrat umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu why they were reciting the quran in their own specific manner and hazrat abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu told that uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i realized and i thought that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closer to me than the vein of my neck so i thought that i did not need to recite it very loud so that is why i was reciting in it a very low and a soft voice and umar radhiyallahu ta'ala who told his reason and he said that i was reciting it loud firstly to scare off the shaitan and to push him off and secondly to wake up all those people who were sleeping and they were not getting for salat uh, getting up for salat at tahajjud and you know what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam suggested was that umar you should what you should lower your voice a bit and abu bakr you should raise your voice a bit islam likes moderation in everything they there is no extremism in islam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not teach and does not like extremism also so while reciting in our salah this is one manner which we are learning that while reciting the quran or the verses we are reciting in salah they should not be just recited in our hearts that just we have in our memory and we just keep on reciting the words in our hearts no and not even just by the movement of our tongue not to utter the words by word of mouth but and not also to recite them very loud also but what we need to do is that we need to recite them in a voice enough to reach our own ears because this will this will improve the quality and the concentration of our salah because we will be saying the words we will be feeling the words in our heart and we will be saying and uttering the words with our tongue and the uttered words we will be hearing them with our ears also so three portals working three organs working at a time so the concentration of salah will improve inshallah so allah says remember your lord within yourselves in humility and in fear without being apparent in speech in the morning and in the evenings and do not be among the heedless indeed those who are near to your lord are not prevented by arrogance from his worship and they exalt him and to him they prostrate allah subhanahu wa taala help us all establish salah help our male members establish congregational salah help us focus and concentrate in our salah and help us offer our salah as if our lord is watching over us help us enjoy our salah and help us develop the feeling of meeting our lord in our salah forgive the shortcomings of our salah and accept all the poor and the inferior quality of salah we have offered and allah subhanahu wa taala help us help us all stray on the stay on the right path with all the steadfastness and with all the determination allahumma alhimna rushdan wa a'izna min shururi anfusina rabbi ij'al li maqimas salati wa min zurriyyati rabbana taqabbal du'a rabbana ighfir li wa li walidayya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqumul hisab rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin